wrestling with WWE Bad Blood. Um, it was last Saturday. Um, it took place in Atlanta, Georgia, at the State Farm Arena. Attendance was uh, sixteen. Attendance was sixteen thousand nine hundred and two. Um, a complete sellout. I mean, that's a large number for, you know, not a big four uh, pay preview. PLE. Because it's back in Atlanta, and Atlanta is, Atlanta. The thing is, is like everyone, like I keep telling people, man, they keep going up, they keep over skipping that southeastern region, other than like Florida, but between Atlanta and Memphis, Little Rock, Charlotte, those are hotbeds for wrestling fans, and especially um, black wrestling fans, like. Dude, I'm from that region. That's all we grew up on. We still do wrestling moves and shit like that to this day because of that shit. I mean, it's not to be underestimated. And this was the first time them being back in a while. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Shit. They, they showed they ass in that show. You know, I, I personally thought that this was a great show. I mean, for a non, you know, big four paid preview, this was like, you know, a, a like a top, a, a big four, you know, performance. Um, what I de- uh, I was surprised to see was that there was a lot of mixed reviews about this show. I really, yeah. Um. People were kind of mixed about it. They, every, everybody agreed CM Punk and Drew was fantastic, but everything else they were kind of iffy on. Which I was like, what more did you want? <laughs> I, that, I mean, but that also kind of shows how fickle we are. <laughs> God. We some fickle motherfuckers. Uh, but yeah, that show was, I mean, that was basically, remember when I said Bash in Berlin was like a B show? Yeah. And they were just trying to get through it so they could get to the certain things that they needed to get to for Survivor Series? Right. This was the show to get everything that they needed to get done to set up Survivor Series. Like, what the fuck more did you want? I mean, I agree. Um, I couldn't agree more. Um, I again, like, I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, it was a fucking great show. Um, before we get into the um into the matches, uh, you got your Meltro ratings. Oh yes, because it is another edition of guess that rating. Yay. Of course, I am your host, leader of the Squash Quad, Coleco Yachts, along with my host, James J. See, I had to reverse it for you, you know. You know. I take it. I tried. Yeah, I, I tried. Yeah. I, tr- I tried. <laughs> I, I tried. I tried. But now, all right, I got Let, the ratings up. Let's get into it. Um, CM, Let's get into it. CM Punk defeated Drew McIntyre in a hell in a cell match in 31 minutes and 25 seconds. Um, yeah, this, if I'm being honest, this took me back to maybe like 2003, 2004 WWE. Like, this was just like straight up violent in the best way possible. You know, when oh, you... Yeah have, you know, a blood feud as bad as McIntyre and Punk has had, this is how you expect it to end, with blood spilt. And boy, was there a lot of blood spilt in this match. <laughs> oh my god, I'm surprised uh, he didn't pass out like that. <laughs> from, what I, from what I'm hearing, uh, McIntyre actually did get busted open the hard way. Um, it oh yeah, he did. Yeah. Oh yeah, he did. 
Oh. Oh, what the fuck he did? Um, for, uh, 16 staples to close his head. Um, but he is okay. You know, he he's not con- severely injured after that. Um, Punk's okay as well, as far as I know. Uh, nobody got, um, hepatitis. Nobody got AIDS. Um, there was nothing cringe. It was just two guys beating the hell out of each other. And it was, it was good to watch. It was, it, it was a good way to end a blood feud that they had, which is what Hell in a Cell is supposed to do. It's the whole point of the concept of Hell in a Cell. Um, what say you, Kaliko? Um, AW take notes. This is how you end a feud. <laughs> and this is how you actually use violence. Like, not, not to be violent just for violence sake. And that, to me, is what made this a thing. Honestly, when I, when I, when this match ended, I was like, damn, that should have been the main event. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dead ass. I was like, ain't nobody following that shit. Like, unfortunately, we know why that got changed, but we'll get there when we. Get we there. we 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 know why, but that doesn't change the fact that 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 was like when that ended. I was like, yeah, that should have been the main event. Oh yeah, because everything in it screamed like violence and. The the part that got me was that when when uh, McIntyre got the bag, and I thought it was uh, thumbtacks. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, oh hell no, we about to go. I mean, all of it. Like he ripped the table. He ripped the table handle. I've never seen a boy get whooped with a table handle. Like I'm just yeah. like. The, Dude, that match was it one of the better Hell in a Cell matches that was not title related. Um, yeah, I would say so. I I never really felt like the title should be in Hell in a Cell to begin with. You know, I can understand a a rivalry for a title being so personal that it needs to end, but that's in the Hell in a Cell. But the title never necessarily needed to be a part of Hell in a Cell. While that is the case, I mean, this was this was violent, but it you got why they were violent, and you right. understood why it wasn't just to do it. It. Th- and that was the biggest key of it all to me. It was just like, okay, now now we know how to actually run a match without, you know, all the cringiness of it. Right. Because it got cringe, but not too cringe. The only a, a cringe part for me was when a McIntyre went for the um, the Claymore. And he fell on the stairs, and his back hit like the the edge of the. Stairs. Oh yeah, the back, the and, back. Oh my god, I thought he was paralyzed. Yeah, I that sc- was that was scary. That was definitely a scary moment in the match, but you know, luckily nothing happened. And I don't think, and I don't, I think he just undershot the the boot. I don't think he intentionally went to hit his back in there. Um, I think he was going for it to be, you know, flat on the the steps, but, you know, mm. mistakes happen. Yeah, it just happened. He just happened to catch that end, and it, right. yeah. But, hot damn, but, th- but that's the way you end a, a fucking feud. I can't get no better than that. Um, how many scores do you give this one? <laughs> That was five, just on the violence. <laughs> the 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 proper the proper I put this this way, a five on the properly sto- told story of violence. Yeah, and ev- and everything that they did, because every piece of violence that they input in the match served a purpose. 
Yeah. And that is the point of it all. Not just for, not to get the shock for the shock's sake, but to understand why they went there. Like when Punk hit him in the fucking head with the toolkit, it made fucking sense because he's like, that's literally the last thing he had. That was his last resort at that time. Right. But yeah, five, easy. Easy five. I give it five as well. Mm. Um, it was, it was, what a Hell in a Soul match should be. And you can't ask for more than that. Alright, um, Uncle Dave. Um, Dave is, Uncle Dave's a, Uncle Dave's a bitch, so I'll say he gave it three and a half. Nope. Three. No. Four? No. What do you give it? Five. Really? Really? <laughs> okay. I, I said the same that. thing. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I did not expect that. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? He gave it a what? Okay. Wow. Dave uh, defying us. All right. I see Dave you, said. Dave. Dave said, I heard you talking shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I heard you motherfuckers talking shit. Alright, um, singles match for the WWE Women's Championship. Nia Jax defeated Bailey in, um, 14 minutes and 10 seconds. Um, not the battle matches on this card, yeah, they had a little bit more time than they did at SummerSlam, I believe. Um, but there were mistakes. There were some botches. And they were climbing an uphill battle from the very beginning, having to follow the, the Cell match. So, yes, everything was kind of used against them at this point. Um, the only thing that I could say, like, positive about this match was the ending, when Tiffy, you know, got hit and handed the, uh, the briefcase to the referee, and it looked like she was cashing in, which was just good storytelling, but other than that, it wasn't a positive, I didn't have a positive outlook on this match, my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I agree. Um, I thought that the 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 best part was the ending, and they became a victim of a match that literally was setting the tone. I ain't even gonna lie to you. They, it, if that match was not following that Hell in the Cell match, it might have been a little higher. But following that, you're like, ooh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, that, that was the problem. Like, and, and I think that was just me the whole night. Because as much as I liked the show and I thought the show was fantastic, I just could not stop, like, I could not stop thinking, holy shit, they're having to follow that? Like, if only you... You started the show at Nia Jackson, barely watched Drew, Cody, and Roman, and then watched the Punk and Drew match at the very end. That would have been the perfect way to actually watch the match, the show. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Kind of like how uh, Star Wars, you got to start from a certain... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Most definitely. Um, How many stars you give this one? I love Bailey and I love Naya, but this was not it. I, two because of the story, but it's all you got, dog. I give it two and a half. It was a two star match. The story kind of gave it that extra bump. All right, all right. Let's time to see. Guess that rating. Um, Meltzer gave it. Two and a quarter. Nope. 
One and a quarter. Nope. Two? Nope. Okay, what do you give it? One and three fourths, which I'm like, this three fourths shit. I was close with the one and a quarter. <laughs> I was close. One with... and a quarter don't count, sir. You gotta, you gotta be on it. We're not rounding it off. This ain't math where you round it to the nearest tenth, sir. Okay. I see you. I see what you're doing here. I, um, Damian Priest defeated Finn Balor um, in 12 minutes and 45 seconds. Um, pretty good match. Um, solid hand from both guys. Um, told a good story. Um, opinion, my opinion is Finn Balor sort of probably won, but when's the last time Finn Balor won, won a match? I could also see as well. So, Tag titles? Hello. <laughs> that was like over 100 days ago. Or have you not seen the meme hey. at this point? <laughs> hey, sir, it counts. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, just knowing WWE logic, it made all sense. So I didn't really have a problem with it. What say you? Yeah, we both were on the... F- we both agreed that Finn would win, so it just, yeah, it threw everything out. It told the story, but my thing is this now is where does, because it seems like with Priest getting the win, it seems like it's over. And and what did I tell you? What did I tell you on this preview? Um, elaborate. <laughs> I told you when we did this preview that Priest and Ripley could not win at the same time. One is going to win and the other is going to lose. Yes, you did say that. <laughs> what? <laughs> I told you. I told you, sir. Yeah. Um. Well, technically, if you're looking at the record books, Rhea did win her match. She didn't get the title, and that's what matters. That's what people care. Well, I mean, and, Which was the most botched thing ever. Oh, yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute, but... Um, yeah, it, 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 <laughs> don't, don't, don't play me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I I didn't have a problem with Priest and Balor. Um, well, how many spells did you give it? I gave it a... It's a solid three and a half. It told the story. I just... I thought it would have been more shenanigans for Finn... Because it seemed like Finn took this shit way more personal. So, therefore, I thought he would have won because he took it more personal. I mean, it would have made sense for Finn to win. But, again, when's the last time Finn's won a match? A singles match? I get it. I, I get people's thing with Finn winning singles matches, but... I mean, last summer he had like three title matches against Seth Rollins, and he lost literally every one of them. And he didn't really win a match in between to say, "Well, that's why I'm getting this title match again." While that is true, it's I also think Finn was a little bit more on the petty side of trying to get to where he is now, where he was trying to get rid of that. Yeah. Because to me, he's been more involved with telling everybody why the fuck he kicked them out than actually winning the match, if that makes sense. Yeah. Well, I give it a, uh, I agree, uh, three and a half is uh, a very fair assessment of this match. Um, no problems on my part. Alright, um, Women's World Championship match. Nope, guess that rating, sir. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, yes, uh, guess that rating, okay. Um, three, three dogs. Nope. Um, the T 
he definitely didn't give this a four star. Three and a half? Nope. Three. Three and a quarter. Three and a quarter. Okay. Three and a... All right, that's fair. Dave is... Uh, Uncle Dave is being somewhat fair with this show so far. I'm a little surprised. All right. Uh... Say, uh, women's world championship match. Uh, Rhea Ripley defeated Liv Morgan uh, by disqualification. Uh, Dominic Mysterio was suspended above the ring in a shock cage. Um, this was the return of Raquel Gonzalez, um, which is fantastic to see Sheezel again. Um, I'm yes. so glad that she's, you know, back. Um, Dominic Mysterio took one of the gnarliest bumps, not even a bump, just, like, falling out of the cage, and, like, he could have literally, like, broke his leg. Um, oh, yeah, easily. Which was, like, a wow moment, a definitely an uh, oh-my-god moment. Um, solid match from both goals, but... It doesn't change the fact that the the ending of this match was botched as fuck. Um, the referee did a very, very bad job of not looking where he's supposed to look. And it destroyed the whole match. And... It definitely deflated a lot of people's enthusiasm of it, which it, it rightfully should have. Um, from what I heard, this people said that this was the worst match on the card. Um, not just because of the botch, because a lot of people were like legitimately pissed that Rhea didn't win. Um, which I could say, well, that's how you're supposed to feel about the match. But technically she did win, because it was by disqualification, so... You know, a lot of cluster fuckery in the last, like, two minutes of this match. No, Kaliko? Yeah. I mean, I will say this, though. Their chemistry is really good in the ring. Like, the contrast of styles between the two is... is you can just tell. And... And I, I like that. I like that it's going to continue. Um, Dominic, man, he, man, I thought he broke an ankle. Oh, yeah. Because he was just dangling. And then he took the fucking shots. Because Rhea was laying them on him. I, I mean, I felt bad. It felt like when <laughs> Seth gave him that break in the shots. Like, <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, but with that being said, yeah, the the ending was was left to be more desired. Um, but that doesn't. I don't think that that would dis take away from the chemistry that the girls had, in my opinion. Yeah. So yeah, I don't. I I'm the person that don't let that rain on the parade because that can happen to anybody everyone has an off night so. give them i give them the mulligan the benefit of the doubt and you know well it wasn't the girl's what? fault fault in this match i'm not saying I'm, I'm talking about the ref too the i'm talking about the ref <laughs> i'm talking about the ref that's who I'm, i give them the benefit of doubt man you gotta you know we all we all fall short that's <laughs> all <laughs> no, as uh, short as Dominic Mysterio in the the shark cage, but I mean he, yeah, I mean he better be glad he fell short, cause yeah. woo, <laughs> like, but yeah, Shit. um, you know, I think it was a great way to extend Liv Morgan and Real Ripley because if Liv just won, you know, clean outright. Then what do you do with Rhea? 
I mean, you, she can't necessarily go for the title again. You know, you do have to change it up somewhat. But, yes. Um, giving putting Raquel in there, it's a new dynamic. It's a roadblock for Rhea. It's a it's a detour for Rhea to go down. That extends the rivalry, and it also makes sense because Raquel was in the same position that Liv Morgan was in when she got injured. You, yep. There was that animosity and that hatred for Rhea Ripley. Um, I don't think Rhea had anything to do with her injury, um, them writing her off TV, but um, it doesn't change the fact that, you know, that that history wasn't already there. Because it exactly. was. So it definitely helps the can the the continuation of both rivalries, and it makes Raquel a bigger profile star because obviously she's wrestling the biggest women star that they have in Rhea Ripley. This is where we call it your past coming back to haunt you. Right. The chickens coming home to roost. Like, like five months ago. Raquel would have been the face in this, but now she's the heel. It's just so interesting how it, it changes so quickly. Yeah. And and it all makes sense. And this is what I'm talking about. Like they're they're doing good on their callback. I will say that. How many stars do you give this one? The botch killed it, but it was still a solid match. Me, personally, the chemistry between the girls, I gave it a three. Just because they had the chemistry. Dom played his part well to me. The botch kind of threw it off, but I don't let the ref fuck up what happened between the wrestlers. Right. Um, no, I think a, a, a three is a solid... Um score for him. It would have been a lot higher if the botch didn't happen, but you know, I digress. Um, still well, still solid. It, it still solved the purpose that it was supposed to solve and that's what matters the most in the end, I suppose. Exactly. Meltzer gave this two and a half. He almost got there. Two and three quarters. Nope. Three and three quarters? No. He, he gave it a flat, too. Oh, okay. okay. Flat, too. Uncle Dave is freaking me out with, <laughs> with these. He's just keeping me guessing this time around. Um, maybe he's just more predictable with AEW matches. Uh, yeah, because you give them 10 stars. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and that brings us to the main event. Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns defeated uh, the Bloodline Solo, Coca-Cola, and um, Jacob Fuck You. Um, it was a solid tag team match for sure. Um, obviously, everybody was super hyped and invested in it. Um... You know, that didn't hurt it. Um, I could make, be make the argument that the wrong person won in this match, but um, when are you going to tell Roman Reigns that he can't win a match also? So, you know, I digress in that part, but um, what say you, Coleco? It's a good match. I, I will say that I still thought Punk and them should have made it. Oh, well, that was that, that's uh, yeah, that doesn't need to be said. <laughs> we, we I, I mean, it, it, everything that I'm telling you, everything that I did was in comparison to that. So, from a story perspective, yes, that match did what it was supposed to do. It got everybody hooked. Two Georgia boys got the win. Fatu looking like, you know, Mr. Fatu that he is, solo being 
the the dude that ain't the dude. He played his part well, I will say that. And of course, Jimmy returning, like I kind of figured he would. Huge pop. Huge pop for Jimmy. Oh yeah. That was Jay, um, uh that was J level pop for Jimmy. So it's safe to say he's not Marty Janetti? Oh no, he's still uh a Jimmy Janetti, but <laughs> even Janetti got a couple of pops. Man, stop. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Great match, great main event, great storytelling. Jimmy came back. It was a good overall match. And then even the aftermath, it 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 did its part. It, like I said, it set up what it needed to set up for what we were hoping to happen, and everything. I didn't think it was all going to happen in one night because we went over the. Like it's funny, our review. We were like, "What if the Rock comes back?" And I was like, "Well, the Rock's coming back. It's just a matter. Of, he's he's not going to come back and touch anybody because I right. think he's just going to come back and be like, "What the fuck is going on here?" He sounded like uh, Ronald Isley in that, in that. Uh, well, I don't know. Have you ever, you know who Ronald Isley is, right? Um, I think No, nope, so. you do not know who Ronald Isley is. Anyways, so there's this song called Contagious. And, and, and he is about, you know, he getting cheated on and he creeps into the house and he opens this door. And that's the rock coming in the door, and he's going, "What the hell is going on between the sheets in my home?" That is what the rock is doing right now, because he's looking at Roman like, "What the fuck is going?" On? <laughs> and Roman's just looking, like, and, and and you know what? It made sense in the sense that Roman, when Roman was leaving. Jimmy was like, you a man of your word. We got to go help. And Roman was like, it's supposed to be just for one night. Right. So everything that I told you was came to fruition, which is that it's, a, it's not about Cody. It was about him being a man of his word. Right. And now it's a question of how much of being a man of your word is costing you in the grand scheme of things. Because now we're seeing the price being paid on Cody's behalf of being a man of his word. Yeah. So now we're going to see the fallout of what Roman's cost is for being a man of his word. And that is the whole, that's the perspective of it now. Not, not, and Because everybody just kind of want to get to the rock and Roman and whatever. And, and that's perfectly fine. But you had to lay the why and the effect of it all. So two enemies becoming friends or becoming tag partners for one night caused a rift between everybody's spectrum not just one sided you know i think i think that's just a sad situation that jimmy got a bigger pop than the rock did you know i and on my perspective i was more happy to see jimmy than i was uh Dwayne. and it, it's just you know it just eats me up that you know he's probably going to be the reason that Bad blood was so successful was because I was at the end, and I was because I was there, and people knew I was going to be there. Well, the well, if you saw what happened after the show, right, you would have that different opinion because he's basically holding the card, holding the card in his deck. It's not like he's going because he easily could have wrecked like spoke how he felt after, as he was walking to his goddamn trailer but he decided not to so that tells you that it's coming down the pike of what he's thinking um me I mean that's just me so in this case he's just being the 
the eye in the sky, if you will. Yeah. So he's just the eye in the sky while everything else between Roman and Solo is playing out and he's holding on to his opinion of it to drop that hammer later. And in the meantime, because how could I put it? There's an instant consequence and a delayed consequence. Roman is going to get the delayed consequence because The Rock ain't going to say shit till he's ready to say it. Right. Cody's getting the instant consequence because Kevin Owens is in that ass right now. And that's by design because what you want is because if The Rock says what he says, it turns off you tuning into what Cody and Kevin is doing. Yeah. So you, so the Cody and Kevin thing is happening right now to keep you, oh shit, this is the first fallout from that, from that happening. And then that other shoe drops and you're like, oh shit, now that's happening. So yeah, I, I think it's beautiful though. To me, that's beautiful. That's beautiful storytelling. There Beautiful was, story. There was a video that came in out after, um, after um, when The Rock came out from the Bloodlines perspective, um, Solo, because they were in the crowd. And Solo turns to somebody and he says, it's all a part of the plan. Kind of um, insinuating that The Rock is on their side of things. You know what I mean? That would make sense because The Rock still got unfinished business with Cody. I mean, it seems like everybody has unfinished business with Cody at this point. I hey, and that and that's the point. I mean, of course, you know why The Rock has unfinished business with Cody because of all the shit that happened up the mania. But now Kevin's in it because of the fact that he feels betrayed by his friend because he chose to go with Roman and God knows how much investment Roman or KO tried to do with getting rid of Roman. Right. So it it's a three it's a this is the three sixty to three hundred and sixty degree storytelling that I craved in wrestling for the longest <laughs> fucking time. And it is fucking there, and it is fucking awesome. I think it was the last part, you know, you mentioned, you know, and we've talked about for some time. Kevin Owens attacked um, Cody Rhodes in the parking lot, which wasn't actually a part of the show. Um, it was revealed later in the night via um, fan video um, taken after everybody was leaving the stadium. Um... How, how how do you feel about um them doing an angle after a paid preview like that? I think it's actually pretty cool, honestly, because it kind of tells you you know the show isn't over when it's over. Things can happen afterwards, and you immediately have that setup of Cody Rhodes and Kevin Owens, you know, on Friday. For SmackDown, so you you're in, you don't have to wait to do it. It's there. You know what I mean? Well, it keeps you tuned. It's it's designed to keep you on your your toes. Because when that happened, everybody's like, "Oh shit, what the fuck is gonna happen Friday?" And then guess what happened Friday? Kevin Owens got banned from the arena. Right. So everybody's like, oh, shit, I ain't get to fucking watch what happens on Friday. But then guess what happens? Kevin Owens sneaks in. <laughs> and then Kevin Owens sneaks in, and everybody's booing him, and he gets to go, well, everybody is sitting up here wondering why I did... And, and they cut his mic on purpose, but they got the key point that I've been saying for the longest out. Which was... Everyone, he's basically said, everyone was yelling that I betrayed Cody, when in actuality, Cody betrayed me. And that is exactly what I was, and once he got that nugget out, 
And once he got to try to explain it, Mike got cut off. Right. So now, and then he goes to Corey's bike, takes the takes the headset, and starts trying to explain it. But Cody comes out. So now it gets you hooked into why he did it. So now it gets your brain going. Get going. He never got to say why he did it, even though I may hate him for it, but I never got his side of the story. Right. And a, to a guy like me, that matters. I'm like, holy shit, I want to hear what the fuck he got to say. Oh yeah. Because Kevin never does anything without reason. That, yes, 100%. <laughs> like... Well, he may be a lot of things, but God damn it, he has a reason for everything he does. How many stars you give this one? Now, are we including the post parking lot beatdown or just the match itself? I feel like just the match. Okay, all right. The match itself was probably a four. I would say, I would say the match is a four. Uh, The crowd was super into it. Uh, However, we knew the outcome was predictable. Jimmy coming back played a huge part, but a four. I agree. I think four is a a solid um, number for it, for sure. All right. Um, Meltzer. Meltzer, Meltzer. Yeah, well, what would Meltzer rate it? Three and a half. Ooh, higher. Um, good. Uh, Surprisingly five. higher. Four? Surprisingly higher. Four and a half. Four and a quarter. Hmm. Okay. I see you, Melter. Interesting. See, Melter, we, we give you benefit of the doubt over here a little bit. A little bit. A little a bit. Wait until Russell Dream next week. Oh, gosh. Jesus Christ. Yeah, we still have to review that. Uh, preview that. <laughs> oh, do we? Yeah. I mean, I see the card. It, yeah. uh... we'll, we'll get into it in a minute. Um, <laughs> this show, particular. Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs in the middle. Oh, it was thumbs up because it did what it's supposed to do. I, I told everybody, Bash in Berlin was the B show to get to this show so they could get to Survivor Series. And then the goddamn overseas show in Saudi Arabia is going to be another B show to get to Survivor Series in Vancouver so they can show they ass. I'm I it's coming. Yeah. Um I give it two thumbs up. All uh, all around a good show. Match of the night was Punk McIntyre. Just oh, yeah. just just yeah. just yeah, I mean, just crown crown their asses already. <laughs> that will conclude our coverage of Bad Blood. Hey folks, this is the Colossal Mike Law, and you are listening to Wrestling With Entertainment. Enjoy the show, support these guys, we appreciate it very much. We'll see you at ringside.